Thank you all for joining us for the workshop today about updates and clarifications to the SCS evaluation process. Uh, this workshop is being recorded. Um, so while folks are still trickling in, I'll go ahead and introduce the team and then we will get started. Uh, my name is Carrie Connect and I'm the branch chief of the Transportation and Land Use Planning Branch here at CARB, uh, which includes our work on Senate Bill 375. We're very happy to have you here. Our goals for today are first to share clarifications in how regional plans will be evaluated in the fourth cycle of sustainable communities strategies under the existing evaluation guidelines. And second, to seek input on the process and content for future updates to the evaluation guides over the medium to longer term. So why is this so important? Uh, last September was the 15th anniversary of SB 375, the landmark law seeking to reduce greenhouse gases by integrating land use and transportation planning. And last year, CARB released uh, its second report under Senate Bill 150. This report found that despite the hard work of so many people over these years, per person miles driven and the greenhouse gas pollution caused by passenger vehicles has continued to rise. The third thing that happened a little over a year ago is that CARB updated its scoping plan uh, the path to carbon neutrality by 2045, and found that despite incredible strides in areas like zero emission vehicles, in order to achieve the state's climate goals, we must rapidly reduce per capita vehicle miles traveled. This is an urgent issue because as the governor pointed out last week, we just had the hottest year ever recorded. And this has resulted in extreme weather like massive floods and natural calamities with real tragic impacts. And of course, it goes beyond the climate issues, as I'll get back to. So it's a major challenge with few easy answers, and improving it is going to take strong action at every level of government, from local partners to regional agencies and transit districts to the state. And one of the cornerstones, a critical lens for looking at VMT reduction efforts statewide, are these sustainable community strategies that we're here to discuss. Um, they're the blueprint for how to reduce greenhouse gas emissions via strategic regional growth, uh, over $1.5 trillion in transportation investments and other land use and transportation programs and policies. So it's essential that these plans help us understand where and how new homes and jobs are being planned, what the future transportation networks will look like, new programs and policies, and what all of this means for greenhouse gases, air quality, and many other benefits and where they tell us that we're off track to use them as a tool for getting back on track. So our 150 report found that the benefits that have been projected in these plans for over a decade, many of them are not coming to pass. This is a result of many factors that need to be addressed, not only for the climate reasons I already mentioned, but because these plans hold the potential for achieving real improvements in public health, in equity and social and racial justice, in cost savings for households and economic benefits. And we want all of these benefits to happen as well. So that brings me to why we're all here today. Um, with the fourth cycle of these plans upon us, CARB staff would like to discuss the guidelines by which we at CARB evaluate these plans. We're tasked with evaluating whether or not they will meet greenhouse gas targets set for each region if implemented. And we wanna discuss how we are seeking to improve that review process. So as you'll hear, some of this is simply clarifications uh, that we wanna make sure that regional agencies and the public are aware of specific details in the guidelines and how these, for example, how these intersect with recently adopted regulations or market trends. Um, but there are also areas where the guidelines need more clarity. So just as one example, now that automated vehicles are going out on the road, should regional plans begin to reflect them? And so for this category, we've outlined a plan to address a collection of issues in the medium and longer term. And today we especially want to hear your thoughts on the topics and the process for these medium and long-term changes. Um, so as I wrap up, I just wanted to acknowledge that all of this is just one effort related to this here at CARB and it will intersect with other important efforts, particularly an update to the regional greenhouse gas reduction targets that is due in 2026. So here's what's going to happen next today. Um, you will hear from two members of our team um, and others are on hand to listen and to answer your questions. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute to introduce a few people who may be part of the Q&A. 
Um, starting with Jen Gress, our division chief. And then we will also, um, we have a number of staff along with two supervisors to help answer the questions, uh, including Nithamani Kalandir, who leads the transportation analysis section, which is guiding this update process. Hey, good morning, everyone. And Leslie Kimurasito, whose team, uh, along with two supervisors, I'm sorry, whose team, along with Mani's team, oversees all of the SES review here. Good morning. So, um, Ashia Nadakal will be presenting the main presentation today, but first, Kristen Major will help us break the ice and learn who is in the audience. Um, but before handing it over to them, I just want to acknowledge the many folks in the room here. Uh, we're going to learn a little more about you in one second, but I want to acknowledge that you know the many MPOs, nonprofit, and research experts, and members of the public here today. Um, we learn about so many innovative efforts that are happening in regions and local agencies, and I know it's made possible by the dedication and creativity and hard work occurring throughout the state by so many of you. So I want to thank you all being here for this conversation and turn it over now to Kristen to help us get started. Great. Um, thanks, Carrie, and good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Kristen Major, and um, before we dive into the presentation, I'd just like to go through some logistics on how to participate. Um, so first, if you need technical assistance during the meeting today, um, you can send a message to us using the Zoom Q&A function that's at the bottom of your screen, and we'll do our best to assist you. Um, then throughout the workshop, if you have any questions or comments, you can either um, type your questions into the Q&A, and we'll try to respond to them when we go into one of the Q&A sessions sessions, or um, once we're in a Q&A session, you'll be able to use the Zoom raise hand function to be called on to speak. Um, if you're participating by telephone, you can use star nine to raise your hand. Um, most of the public comment and the Q&A will take place after the formal presentation, but we will make a couple of pauses during the presentation to answer clarifying questions that may come up. So that covers all the logistics. And with that, um, I'd like to ask a few poll questions. Um, the intent of this is to just help us all get a sense of who's participating in the webinar today. So I'm gonna ask Sage to bring up our first poll question. So in this question, we're asking, um, what sector do you represent? And I'll just give it a minute until we, looks like we're getting some good answers here. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, it kind of looks like it's slowing down. Sage, do you want to share those answers with everybody? Um, it looks like about um, two thirds of the participants are just shy of that are from MPOs. We've got also a good mix of other representation from nonprofits, state and local government agencies. Um, so let's dive into the next question where we're just asking you what region you represent. Um, so we're asking, do you represent the Northern California region, Central Valley region, Southern California region, or coastal region? Let's see, is everybody seeing that poll question? I guess we're not seeing it yet. Sage, do you want to run that second question? Not yet, yeah. Looks like we may be having some technical difficulties with the poll questions. Let's give a second. Like, yeah, let's yeah, we'll give it a little it. second to see if yeah. we can figure this out. Because it would be great for all of us. Of course, we'll know who participated because we'll have the participant list. But we thought it might be fun for everyone to understand um, who's participating today. Yep, now we ah, can... here we go. Great. Thank you, Thank Sage. You, Sage. OK, looks like we've got a bunch of answers. We'll give it a little bit more time, though. OK, why don't we share those results? It looks like the responses are slowing down. 
Um, okay, looks like we have, again, a good mix, a good diversity of participation here from all across the state, um, all the regions pretty well represented. That's great. Um, and then hopefully we'll have better luck with the third question. So in the last question, we're kind of trying to get a sense of how familiar the participants are with the sustainable communities strategy. Um, so why don't you go ahead and answer that one and we'll see. Um, Okay, looks like it's starting to slow down. Um, you can go ahead and share those results, Sage. That would be great. And this is really exciting too, because um, it looks like we have a good mix of people who are both kind of experts on this already and people who are newer to the topic. And that's great because it'll bring kind of a fresh perspective. Um, so thank you again for participating in that poll. Um, and then we are done with this sort of logistics session. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Ashia to go over the formal presentation. Thanks. Thanks, Kristen. Uh, welcome, everyone. For today's presentation, we will cover the following items. We will begin with the purpose of hosting today's workshop, followed by the background of the SCS evaluation process. Next, we will address the approach to update the upcoming SCS guidelines. We will then address the topics that require further clarification or updates to the existing guidelines followed by next steps. Finally, we will open the floor for questions and comments at the end of the presentation, and feel free to ask any questions for clarification during the presentation. CARB staff has identified three objectives for this workshop. One, clarify the existing 2019 Final Sustainable Community Strategy Program and evaluation guidelines. Two, explain expectations for the fourth cycle SCS evaluation process. And three, discuss the timeline for medium and long-term changes to the guidelines. All these will lead to strengthening the SCS development and implementation to help achieve the designated DHG reduction target. Since the review of the first SCS of the third cycle of SCSs, CARB staff identified the need to incorporate lessons learned from the third cycle of SCS evaluations, the need to address recent changes in external conditions, example, technological, market, and economic shifts, and new state policies such as advanced clean cars too the need to clarify expectations on strategies based on the existing guidelines, the possibility of greater consistency in approach for GHG quantification, for example, of model strategies. As the fourth cycle begins, CARB staff wants to address topics requiring greater attention by clarifying well, the existing 2019 guidelines and updating them periodically through a public process. Before I go over CARB's approach to clarify and update the SCS evaluation process, I will begin with an overview of the SB375 program. The Sustainable Communities and Climate Protection Act, SB375, supports the state's climate goals by helping reduce greenhouse gas emissions through coordinated transportation, housing, and land use planning. Under the Sustainable Communities Act, the California Air Resources Board sets regional targets for greenhouse gas emission reductions from passenger vehicle use. CARB sets targets for 2020 and 2035 for each of the 18 metropolitan planning organization regions. Each of the regions must prepare a Sustainable Community Strategy, SCS, as an integral part of its regional transportation plan that contains land use, housing, and transportation strategies that, if implemented, would allow the region to meet GHG targets. Once the SCS is adopted by the MPO, CARB must review the adopted SCS to accept 
or reject the MPO's determination that the SCS, if implemented, would meet the targets. If the SCS does not meet the regional targets, the MPO must prepare an alternative planning strategy or APS that shows how it could meet the targets. SB 375 bill was passed in 2008 with the horizon year of 2035. Pursuant to SB 375, CARB first set regional targets in September 2010 and then updated targets in March 2018. CARB will soon begin the process for the upcoming target setting in 2026. CARB staff published the Sustainable Communities Strategy Review Guidelines in 2011. CARB staff updated this in November 2019 with the final community, Sustainable Community Strategy Program and Evaluation Guidelines. This year, in 2024, CARB staff will go over clarifications and updates to the 2019 SCS guidelines for the upcoming SCS cycles and begin a process of making more regular updates moving forward. Since the inception of the SB 375 program, all MPOs have completed two cycles of SCSs and most have completed their third. Some MPOs have begun the fourth cycle of SCSs. Here is a big picture overview of the current SCS evaluation process between CARB and MPOs. SB 375 statute requires MPOs to submit the technical methodology to CARB before starting the public participation process and encourages MPOs to work with CARB until it concludes that the technical methodology will yield accurate GHG estimates. Next, the MPO develops its draft plan and makes it available for public comment and review. During this commenting period, CARB staff may comment on the draft SCS. Then, MPOs revise their plan, go through their board adoption process, and submit it to CARB for SCS approval. CARB staff plan a three-phased approach with short, medium, and longer-term steps to clarify and update the existing SCS evaluation process. The topics included in the short-term phase are effective immediately as they only require clarification of CARB's expectations on GHG calculations. These clarifications do not include any changes to the existing guidelines. For example, the pandemic led to an increase in telecommuting, and CARB wants to be clear on what supportive data MPOs must provide to make realistic assumptions. CARB staff will kick off the medium-term topic updates later this spring and advance the development of long-term topics during the spring to fall of 2024. CARB staff will follow a similar process for both medium and long-term topic changes to the SCS evaluation process, with the only difference being the amount of time before a topic, medium or long-term, becomes effective. The medium-term topics focus on procedural changes in the evaluation process and do not affect the SCS development. Once the approaches to medium-term topics are finalized, considering that MPOs require advance notice of any changes made to the process, these changes will be effective after six months of finalizing the document. The topics included in the long-term phase would require more significant changes to the guidelines that would change the quantification or process or both. For example, this would include a new recommended quantification methodology for an SCS strategy that may require more extensive research and data analysis. Once a long-term topic is finalized, changes related to the topic will generally take effect after two years. Here is a preliminary list of possible topics that could be addressed by phase. This is not an exhaustive list and will be updated as needed. Short-term topics include telecommuting, auto operating costs, zero emission vehicles, emission factors for off-model strategies, 
and progress on carryover strategies. Medium term topics include the CARB MPO information exchange and submittals, SCS amendment process, and rounding protocol. Long term topics include automated vehicle impacts, SCS alignment with RENA, strengthened and streamlined evaluation protocols, additional ZEV and telecommute updates, and auto operating costs. Before we start going over the short term topics, do you have any clarifying questions? Seeing none, now we will go over the short term topics in more detail. As mentioned in the previous slides, in the short term, CARB wants to clarify the expectations for the fourth cycle SCSs based on the existing guidelines and how to apply them. These clarifications are effective immediately and will apply to the fourth and upcoming cycles until further updates. The first short-term topic is telecommuting. Telecommuting has become a new normal after the pandemic. MPOs reflect the changes in baseline and some are used as a strategy in SCSs. MPOs evaluate the impacts of telecommuting either through on-model or off-model methods. In short-term, CARB is identifying the kinds of justification and documentation necessary. Considering that telecommuting is being associated with significant GHG reductions, MPOs should provide strong justification for projecting a higher share of telecommuting in the future years. Moreover, MPOs should document evidence based on the existing data sources and surveys. The rebound effects should be appropriately accounted for in the GHG quantification as explained in the current guidelines. CARB will also address telecommuting in the long term, which will likely result in more significant changes to this topic in the long term. The auto operating cost or AOC serves as a key input in the RTP SCS travel demand modeling. CARB began the process of working with big four MPOs on refining AOC to include the latest fleet mix from ACC2 along with fuel efficiency rebound effects. CARB staff has concluded that the effort to update AOC is more complex than originally anticipated and needs additional time to address technical issues and allow time for public review. Therefore, this effort will be continued as part of the long-term changes category and for future SCS cycles. MPOs should continue to use the existing approach described in the 2019 SCS guidelines for AOC calculation with the latest fuel and non-fuel costs. MPOs should document step-by-step -step calculations in the technical methodology. Also, we want to ensure MPOs use all fuel types since some MPOs couldn't do it the last cycle. Many technological, market, and policy changes have reshaped the ZEV landscape. Since the previous guidelines were developed, the Advanced Clean Car Tools Regulation was adopted, federal ZEV incentives have expanded, the cost differential between ZEVs and conventional vehicles is closing, and expected to achieve cost parity by 2031 or earlier. And the plug-in hybrid EV market has grown to have a smaller market share than expected. MPOs need to account for changes like these in the GHG reduction calculation for ZEV strategies to ensure calculations are based on the latest data and that they are taking credit only for efforts that go above and beyond state and federal programs. As with all topics, we encourage MPOs to reach out early in their SCS development process to discuss how this might apply to their technical methodology. Another short-term topic is the emission factor for off-model strategies. Currently, MPOs use inconsistent emission factors to calculate GHG emission reduction for each off-model strategy. Using emission factors of older versions of the MFAC model will result in overestimating the benefits of SCS strategies. As per existing guidelines, 
MPOs need to use the most recent version of MFAC for all of model strategies to better reflect their contribution toward GHG emission reduction. Lastly, CARB would like to clarify our expectations for progress on carryover strategies. For the fourth cycle, we will more robustly apply the current guidelines on strategies that are carried over from the previous plan. The intention is that MPOs show progress on previously adopted strategies and that when they are falling behind, they adjust timetables or identify actions to get the region back on track. For instance, a region could not continue to assume it will receive pricing revenues for the same specific year as the previous plan did without being on track with near-term actions to advance the pricing policy identified in that plan. Do you have any quick clarification questions in the short-term topics? Moving on, we will go over the medium-term topics. As mentioned previously, the medium-term topics focus on procedural changes or clarifications. Changes related to the medium-term topics will involve input from the public and MPOs and be effective six months after finalizing the document. The first topic under medium-term is MPO CARB information exchange and submittals. A goal of program implementation is for CARB and MPOs to work to resolve any concerns with the SCS early in the process and avoid deferring resolution to the SCS evaluation stage. CARB would also like to establish a more standard process for what happens if, during CARB's review after SCS adoption, we cannot recommend acceptance. During the previous SCS cycles, Inconsistencies in the timing and completeness of key milestone call for additional information in the guidelines to boost transparency. The current guidelines include a section on MPO CARB information exchange and submittals that could be expanded to provide additional details. The second topic under medium term is the processing of RTP SCS amendments and target achievement. CARB's guidelines currently do not provide any guidelines, any guidance for MPOs on whether to reanalyze the SCS when an RTP amendment occurs. Also, in previous cycles, CARB did not revisit the determination of an SCS that went through an amendment process. Currently, when an MPO makes an amendment to the RTP, some re-estimate the plan's GHG emissions and reanalyze whether the SCS is still able to achieve the region's SB375 GHG reduction target. For example, SANDAG has recently undergone a substantial amendment and resubmitted its 2021 SCS to CARB for review. We know that there are types of RTP amendments that could affect the ability of the SCS to continue achieving the region's target. This topic would explore updates to the guidelines to provide more detail for MPOs about when CARB should be notified of an RTP amendment and if achieving the GHG target should be reanalyzed. Lastly, we will go over our update regarding the rounding protocol. In the existing guidelines, MPOs can round to the nearest integer percent after all modeled and off-modeled GHG calculations have been summed. Considering that majority of the MPOs in the third cycle of SCSs did not use rounding to meet their target, CARB staff proposes to remove this from the guidelines. Do you have any quick clarification questions on the medium term topics? Okay, we will now go over the list of long term topics. For long term topics, we will hold a public process and communicate our expectations through guidelines update. Two years of lead time would be provided for MPOs to make changes in this category 
once the update is finalized. This phase includes topics where a significant change to the guidelines would be needed, such as adding or updating with a new recommended quantification methodology for an SCS strategy or a topic that may require more extensive research. We will kick off the process in the second quarter of 2024. Considering that AVs are now in the market, CARB will work with MPOs to explore how MPOs plan to model AVs and their impacts in their upcoming RTP SCS models. CARB is aware that some MPOs are already making efforts to incorporate this into their travel demand model. The 2022 SB 150 progress report and Appendix E of the scoping plan call for exploring measures to ensure greater consistency and alignment between regional RENA allocations and SCSs. We will work with HCD, MPOs, and other interested parties to improve SCS RENA alignment. We know that MPO staff sometimes feel that the SCS review is time consuming, and it is for us as well. Strengthening and streamlining the evaluation protocol will benefit both CARB staff and MPOs. We would like to have upcoming conversations with you all about how to evaluate SCSs, keeping the two objectives of strengthening and streamlining the evaluation protocol in mind. As discussed in previous slides, considering that there have been several changes related to ZEV, we will work on updates on ZEV to capture its impacts on GHG reductions in the long term. With regards to telecommuting, the post-COVID behavioral changes or new normal in travel need to be better understood. Additional research could help us all better understand the impacts of telecommuting on GHG emissions. CARB will also continue efforts around auto operating costs to include the latest fleet mix of ACC2 along with fuel efficiency rebound effects. We will also publish a calculator reflecting these changes. Here are our next steps. CARB will develop the draft memo for the medium term changes, release it this spring for comments and conduct a public workshop. Our goal is to finalize and release medium term changes in the middle of this year to be effective starting six months later. CARB will continue to advance research and policy development and monitor other developments around topics flagged for longer term attention. For instance, we are working to develop an interagency research contract to examine the impact of telecommuting. And moving forward, CARB will continue to announce other possible updates with the same general process of input and months of or years of advance notice. CARB plans to kick off the target setting process soon and will host a public workshop in the second quarter of this year to share the process and schedule. At various points throughout the process, we will be reaching out to exchange information and hear your thoughts. CARB would now like to hear your thoughts and comments or questions on the topics addressed and the process for updating the topics in the near future. I will read through a few questions and then open the floor to hear from you. Here is the list of topics again for your ready reference. What feedback do you have about the topics? Are there additional topics where the guidelines can support greater clarity or consistency in GHG evaluations? What should the process for updating medium and long-term topics look like? How can we all work together to streamline the evaluation process while successfully implementing SB 375 goals? How can we further embed equity through the evaluation process? Are there any other comments or feedback? And with this, I will hand it over to my colleague, Kristen, to facilitate the questions and comments. 
<clears throat> Great, thanks, Ashia. So um, as a reminder to participate in this session, you can use the Zoom raise hand function and we will call on you to speak. Or if you're participating by phone, you can use star nine to raise your hand. And then um, another option is to type your comments or questions into the Q&A and we'll read some of those and answer them as we have time. So um, I am going to go ahead and monitor to see if we have any hands raised, but in the meantime, we'll answer some of the questions that came in to the Q&A uh, while Ashia was giving her presentation. So um, I'll just go ahead and read some of these questions. The first one is, how can we submit questions or comments after this session? Um, let's see. Nesamani, do you want to take that one? Or I think Ashia knows, I think she will be giving out the email address where you can send your questions to. Exactly. Uh, thanks, Kristen. Um, you can send your comments and questions um, to sustainablecommunities at erb.ca.gov. Yeah, that's the email ID. You can send it to us. And we also um, welcome your comments until uh, on this slide specifically until December. Uh, until January 31st, sorry, until Jan 31st. Um, so this is not your only opportunity. You can always uh, we welcome your comments anytime. Feel free to send your feedback and suggestions to the email ID provided in this slide, yeah. Okay, great. Thanks, Desimani. Um Another question, and I can answer this one, is will these slides be available online? Um, the answer to that is yes. They actually already are online at that um, website listed there, but we'll go ahead and after the uh, workshop is over, we'll send an email to all the participants with a link to those slides to make it easier for you to find those. Um, let's see. We have any other questions? Let's see. Let's see. Can you please clarify that the GHG target remains the same for the fourth cycle and that this workshop is only updating targets for the SCS cycle beyond 2026? Well, maybe just to clarify briefly, you know, the, the workshop is the workshop now is really about the guidelines by which we evaluate whether um, the SCSs do meet the targets. So it's not really focused on uh, the targets update process itself. Um, what you are, you know, what the questioner is asking about, about the target update process, so that is due to the, you know, by statute uh, by fall 2026. And so, you know, CARB anticipates that the 2026 target update will generally apply to most MPOs fifth cycle SCSs. Great, thanks for helping answer that one, Carrie. Um, let's see, another question we got is how many participants are on the call? It looks like we have 57 attendees today. So um, thank you everyone who has turned out. Um, let's see. Another question that we have is, doesn't SB 375 apply to the green areas on that state map? Um, maybe, Ashia, could you bring us back to that, that map so that we can answer that question for this participant? So the question again is, doesn't SB 375 apply to the green areas on that state map, the areas except 18 MPOs? Hi, this is Leslie Kimura. I, I'm the policy manager for 375. Um, and the answer is no. 375 is specifically um, pinned to the metropolitan planning organizations, which are shown by the boundaries here in gold. Um, happy to follow up with a more specific question on any of the application outside of those areas, though. Um, Thanks, Leslie. Yeah, that question was submitted anonymously. So if any whoever asked that would like any additional details, go ahead and reach out to us, um, either email us or um, 
let us know by raising your hand. I'm still not seeing anybody raising their hand that wants to ask a question live, but feel free to do that if you have any questions. Um, let's see. Another question I've got here is, how can the pace of implementation be elevated? Planning takes a long time and needs to look far ahead. It is important to move the SCS along more quickly. I can start. And if anyone wants to jump in from the CARB side, hi again, this is Leslie Kimura, um, policy manager here for 375 program. And I think, yes, we agree. One of the subjects of our recent report that we sent to the legislature, it's what we call our SB 150 progress report, really tries to focus and send the message that we are very much looking for ways to help accelerate implementation in this space. And when I say we, it is not uh, we recognize in this program implementation of the strategies here are things that, you know, require roles from all levels of government, um, private industry as well, all of the types of strategies that are included in a sustainable community strategies, the authorities to implement them are pretty diffuse. So the idea that we do need to lift these things up requires a lot of different types of actions. They can be, you know, trying to lift up funding for more alternative mobility type services, thinking about how we can better implement land use strategies that are in these areas, get you know either authorities or implementation projects moving forward on pricing type strategies that are included in these plans. There are a lot of different actions here. And I think I would reference if one hasn't checked out our 150 report, there are a couple of different recommendations along those lines some of those areas. Happy to also um, pop the link in for folks to take a look at that. Thanks, Leslie. Um, let's see, and the next question here is, why are ZEV, telecommute, and auto operating costs listed as both short-term and long-term topics? Since they are only quantitative, should they be long-term topics only? Sure, thanks, Kristen. This is uh, Nesamani Kalandiur. I'll take that question. Um, since uh, both, uh, I think all these things like ZEV, telecommuting, and auto operating costs, they're all um, evolving as we speak. So that's the reason why we want to uh, put it in the long term, mainly to collect more information, do more research, um, just to so that we can share that information as we make progress in this program. So we could be we could use those information for the future SESs as well. But for the time being, for the fourth cycle, in the interest of time, we want to use the best available information um, that we can use it currently. For example, um, telecommuting as we speak since the post COVID. Um, things have changed drastically. Um, some data is available, existing data. That's what we want you to use it in the current uh, fourth cycle. And then I know some MPOs are conducting um, surveys and other, other uh, even CARB is planning to fund a research to gather more information. Once that's available, we'll update the guidelines as part of a long-term changes as well. Similarly, auto operating cost, again, um, as we said it in the presentation, the ACC2 fleet mix the ACC2 was adopted as a regulation. We would like to reflect that as part of an auto operating cost, given the challenges and the time needed to conduct thorough analysis and research. That's why we are uh, currently recommending to use the existing guidelines for the fourth cycle. And moving forward, we'll update um, the auto operating cost methodology and provide additional information as well as the calculator to uh, for easy application of the, those changes as well. I hope I answered your question. If you have a follow-up, we'll be happy to expand further. Thanks, Moni. And that yeah. question was um, from Robert Ball, who also, I apologize, Robert, you also asked, how is operating cost not a quantification change? And I believe that Nessamani's answer just now should have answered that one as well. So, um, but again, feel free to raise your hand or um, let us know if, if you have further questions about that. Um, let's yeah, see. Christine, maybe I can just, just to be yeah. clear, on, uh, okay. just maybe maybe Rob's question is might be very specifically for the okay. post cycle. So Rob, um, that is exactly, we are asking the existing guidelines. That's what used by most MPOs uh, for the third cycle. Right now, we are not recommending to change anything. We are still asking you to use the same 
methodology that described in the existing 2019 SES evaluation guidelines. Um, and just maybe up, update the information as you do, as always, like a fuel price and any other information has changed, you can update those things. But the methodology is still the same. The variables that you're using to calculate the auto operating cost is still consistent with what you all used in the past um, SES, SESs as well. Yeah. Uh, Rob, I'll be happy to talk to you more offline as well if you need more information. Thanks, Desmani. Um, yeah. I'm excited to see that we actually have a hand raised so I can stop reading questions. Um, why don't we turn it over? I'll um, allow you to talk. I apologize if I pronounce your name wrong. Chirag Rabari. Uh, hello, can, can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. And um, that, that pronunciation was was uh, very good, Kristen. So thank oh, you. thanks. Um, uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Chirag Rabari, uh, MTC ABAG staff and project manager for Plan Bay Area 2050 Plus. Um, so just want to thank CARB for this um, presentation. And as always, looking forward to ongoing um, collaboration and partnership um, You know, with the, the RTP SCS process. Um, that said, I, I do want to note that MTC and ABAG uh, do not support the approach that CARB is articulating, particularly on the short-term um, evaluation front. Uh, we do not believe the clarifications that CARB is providing will lead to greater consistency or to more accurate GHG forecasts. Um, you know, specifically with respect to, to AOC and, and, you know, that realm of discussion, we want to estimate future vehicle operating costs in a way that maintains consistent assumptions on the vehicle fleet mix throughout the plan and at the same time more accurately reflects travel behaviors based upon existing research literature. We believe that adhering strictly to CARB's approach, uh, preferred approach is likely to result in an overestimation of vehicle miles traveled and vehicle emissions. Uh, on electric vehicles, we recommend taking a collaborative approach towards the very real implementation challenges here and wonky accounting arguments about credit are likely going to have the effect of distorting our shared real world climate policy goals. Um, you know, we think that there are gaps that we can help fill um, with the money and the resources that we are putting behind our EV efforts. And, um, you know, the approach that's being um, uh, proposed could jeopardize those efforts. And finally, on with, with respect to progress and um, pricing in particular, you know, we, we do not believe that CARB has the authority to reject technical quantification methodologies based upon a perceived lack of implementation progress. Um, you know, that is simply not our interpretation of what SB 375 says. But uh, we do look forward to discussing these and other issues in our forthcoming revised technical methodology submittals. So thank you. Thanks, Chirag, for your comments. Maybe just uh, I'll just clarify on the auto operating cost aspect of it, Chirag, for sure. And then maybe the second part, um, Leslie or Carrie can take a um, stab at that as well. Um, the auto operating cost, I think we all made an effort for almost a year. Um, Chirag, you may know that, like at least with the big four MPOs, the intention was to really reflect the latest um, advanced clean car two fleet mix, as well as the rebound effects for the uh, fuel efficiency improvements. That was the intention. We made a good effort. and But given the challenges and uh, the effort that needed uh, to, uh, to develop the methodology, update the methodology, and also go through the public process with all the 18 MPOs and other stakeholders as well, it needs significant amount of time. Given where many MPOs are, since the many MPOs have already started their fourth cycle as CSS, and uh, they are all uh, even in advanced stages, later part of like even draft plan came out for SCAG. So given the interest of time and the interest of uh, fairness to every MPO, we kind of recommending the existing approach, which was used by all MPOs, most MPOs in the third cycle as well. It should not change your performance. It should not change your um, plan, plan demonstration or target demonstration there. So that's the reason why we are recommending the existing approach. And we will continue again. We are not. Uh, that's the reason why we put it in the long term as well. We will put all the effort, continue the progress. We made a good progress. We will take it forward and develop the methodology and update the tools and the guy uh, as well as the guidelines uh, document there and provide it as soon as possible. So that's the timeline that we are working on. Hopefully, we should be able to move forward and make good progress in the next year or so. I'll stop there. Um, maybe the second part, Leslie, do you want to take it the pricing one? 
Sorry, I don't know that I heard a question about the pricing one. Maybe sure, I can. If you want, to maybe it's a feedback. I think we can take it as a comment. I think that's a suggestion that mm -hmm. Chirag makes. That yeah, we don't. Yeah, thanks, Chirag, for that second part of that comment as well. Yeah. Yes, thank you um, for your comment. I see we actually have another hand raised. So I'm going to go ahead and allow Lala Agamarov Nost, and I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. I'm going to allow you to talk so you can unmute yourself if you would like. Uh, you see me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, first of all, I want to know if it will be video available after this webinar. Sorry, are you? Did you ask if the video would be available after the webinar? Be available, yeah. Yes. Um, yes, we okay. will have that posted online eventually. Okay. Because, okay. Um, I really would like to talk with somebody maybe later uh, regarding the new uh, new program and new uh, technology for zero emission vehicles, which depends strongly on uh, structural energy, Raskowski. Uh, materials. It is piezo materials. And okay. we will need uh, PD printing or advanced manufacturing of such materials. So it will be, if I will apply, it will be, of course, long term, because not many companies are uh, familiar with piezo additive manufacturing, which is very and extremely important for that. Uh, so it will be some uh, maybe investigation or, um, you know, we have to know with whom company to work about that issue. Okay, great. Okay. Um, yeah, that does sound like something um, you should feel free to use that email address to send us follow-up information. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I am, um, unless Chirag has his hand raised again, I believe that we've got all We've taken all the hand. Oh, looks like he took it down. So <laughs> I think we've got all those folks covered. I'll go back to the questions that have come in into the Q and A. So let's see. Um, one of the next questions here is: Please define your meeting or expectation of alignment of SCS and Rena. Hi, this is Lovely Kimura again. Um, I think that's really what we're trying to suss out in the process. I think part of what we're recognizing here is that a number of changes have been made on the housing side with recent legislation. We've had many discussions through the RTP guidelines processes, but I also feel like we've gotten a lot of questions um, coming into the next rounds of SCS. What does this mean for alignment between the processes as they've changed now and with SCS evaluation? And so that's something that we wanna discuss. If you guys have feedback on that, really, really would love to hear that early on in the process. And I don't know if, I think who asked that one, James, I'm not sure if you, okay. if you had specifics. Thanks, Leslie. I'll let, um, I'll let the person who answered, I think that one, actually came in possibly anonymously. So if the person has any additional questions, they can feel free to raise their hand and ask those. But um, thanks for that answer. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, sorry, that was James Worthley. So James, hopefully that answered your question, but um, let us know if it didn't. Um, let's see. So the next question I'm gonna read is, what is the timeline for completing the fourth cycle SCS guidelines? So, um, for fourth fourth cycle, we do, we are not updating any guidelines changes there, Andrew. I think it's only just a clarification. We are providing the existing guidelines, the 2019 guidelines. That's what we are uh, using it for. And just we are providing some clarifications, like, for example, that I talked about auto operating costs or uh, telecommute, for example. What type of information that should be included in the plan? That's what we are clarifying, but we are not changing any guidelines um, for the fourth cycle specifically. But for the long-term changes, as we make progress, like as we talked in the presentation, for the medium term, once we finalize those changes, we go through the public process. Once it's finalized, the six months, the effective date for that is six months. Similarly, for long-term, once it's finalized, the effective date will be two years from there. Um, we'll have more conversation, more discussion in the future workshop about specific, time, specific date or uh, timeline for that as well. I hope that answers your question. 
Carrie, do you want to add more to that? Yeah, well, just to clarify, I think that, you know, in general, the, um, the, as Mani and, and Ashi have outlined, there's this plan for giving a certain amount of advance notice. So, you know, a, a medium term, you know, kind of the medium term bucket, um, a change in the medium term um, could apply depending on where in your fourth cycle, you know, what, when an MPO is planning to adopt. But, you know, if that's six months after those changes get um, finalized this year, then that could, that would then apply to them. Um, the long-term changes, which are effective two years out, you know, that's, um, you know, unlikely that would apply to the sports cycle. And math on everyone's calendar. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Yeah, um, time it will take for the discussion plus two years. So that's that gives you a sense of how much advance notice you would have of those changes if you're an NPO staff trying to plan ahead. Okay, thank you for that, Carrie. Um, let's see, the next question is a clarifying question. With the proposal to reevaluate SCS after an amendment to ensure ongoing target achievement, would that only apply to cycle four amendments or earlier cycles that are amended? I think it could apply to earlier cycles. Um, and that's just simply because we have already received a resubmittal from someone from their third cycle. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, the next question is about MFAC. Um, I have a question about using MFAC 2021 for off model strategies. If we employed MFAC 2014 for calculating GHG emissions based on the estimated VMT from the travel model, is it necessary to switch to the 2021 version for off model purposes? If so, what justifies this change? Yeah, this is uh, money here. Let me take that question. Maybe I would like to get a little more clarity from that, Mehdi, from you. Um, I can talk to you a little more offline, but let me just give a big picture response to that question because um, generally the off-model strategies quantified um, for the year 2035, there I think the applicability is really comes like for the 2035 conditions. So to better quantify the benefits of those off-model strategies, it's good to use M in fact, 2021 model or latest model at the time when you develop your plan. Whereas if you are doing it from the travel demand model used like a land use changes or transit changes that from 2005 you are referencing there, we want you to still use MFAC 2014 model. That's what the current guidelines talks about it exactly to quantify that. That's what we want you to follow there. The off model strategies, most MPOs quantifies with and without the plan, without that particular strategy. For example, let me illustrate with an example, car share program or bike share program. Generally, the MPOs use that strategy in 2035, what happens if car share programs comes online or bike share programs comes online. So to better, quanti uh, better quantify the GAG benefits for those strategies, using latest model would capture the um, all the behavior as well as the travel conditions and the vehicle technology and everything. So that's why we would like you to use the latest model. If, you're spe if your question is even more detailed or very specific, uh, Mahiri, I'll be happy to talk to you offline and uh, give you a specific, um, in, your, in your situation, like Shasta situation, I'm happy to uh, provide more uh, information in that regard. Yeah, thanks. Hey, thanks, Nesamani. Um, let's see, I am not seeing um, any new questions in the chat or any hands raised at this time. Um, feel free to jump in if you have anything. Otherwise, I believe, oh, I see a hand just went up. Um, I'm going to allow you to talk. Joel Mandela, go ahead and unmute yourself. Hi, Joel. Um, can you, uh, are you able to unmute yourself and ask your question? We're not hearing you, so maybe ha you are also welcome to, if you're not able to unmute yourself for some technical reason, you can also drop your question into the Q&A and I can read it out loud or your comment if it's a comment.
Okay, looks like he has put his hand down, so it may be that there was some technical difficulties so he couldn't get on there. Let's see, I'll wait for a minute to see if his question pops up in the chat or if any last minute questions come in. Um, And Joel, you can also send us any questions or comments using that email address that's up on the screen right now. Um, Excuse me. No, you said you don't have any questions. Okay, I was going to say it looks like uh, perhaps logged in. Joel is perhaps logged in twice, so it could be that we unmuted the wrong line. Oh. Uh, um, I know sometimes I've had to use one for video and one for my headset or something like that. Um, I don't know if that would help. Yes, I, I will allow both Joels to talk to see. <laughs> I, I, this is Joel Mandela. Oh, but yay, there you are. Uh, I, it must have been some kind of glitch on the technical end because, yeah, I don't have a comment and I didn't raise my hand, but thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thanks, Joel. No worries. Okay, well, I think that um, wraps up the Q&A portion of the of the presentation. So I'm going to, with that, hand it over to Jen Gress, our division chiefs, or I believe that's who's up next, but please let me know if that's incorrect. It's Gary. Oh, it's Carrie. Yeah. Sorry, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Carrie. No, uh, no, I'm just coming on to say, you know, thank you all for being here and that this is not your last opportunity. So through January 31st, um, as you heard, the comment period related to this workshop specifically will be open. Um, and then later this spring, we'll be initiating discussion on the medium term topics. Um, of course, you know, your input is welcome anytime. We uh, appreciate any kind of input and outreach um, and you can email us at the address that's on the screen, sustainablecommunities at arb.ca.gov. Um, you can find more information on the website. We will be posting the um, recording there. Um, so and and while you're there, if you're, you know, if you were forwarded the email, um, you know, the the link to this, uh, please be sure to sign up for our email list. It's going to be getting more active this year and next with things like target setting coming up. So please do make sure you're on there. Um, so um, thank you, thank you so much um, for all the good discussion here today. For your time and interest in this process, all of the comments will be um, reflecting on them and. Um, and appreciate all the chance to answer the questions. So uh, unless there's any other final thoughts, we will be closing the webinar soon and uh, posting the recording on our website. So thank you all again, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everyone.